from the High Definition Production Center of Troy University's Broadcast and Digital Network and Troy campuses around the world. This is Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. Hello and welcome to Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. We're glad you joined us for this look at what's happening in and around Troy University. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. For three years, Troy University's newest dormitory was simply known by everyone as New Residence Hall. Well, that changed on Saturday as the building was officially christened as Rushing Hall. Paige Weeks has the story. As groups of Trojan fans tailgated on Troy University's campus in celebration of the start of football season, one group of individuals met in front of the university's newest dormitory to celebrate its official naming. Lewis and Sue Rushing along with their family were met by university officials and the Sound of the South as they got their first look at the newly built Rushing Hall monument sign and marker. I've referred to uh, what is now Rushing Hall as the Ritz Carlton of all dormitories. I think it reflects the modern student, it reflects the uh, expectations. Although Rushing Hall has been open since 2015, the dorm continues to be one of the most updated and technologically advanced buildings on Troy's campus. The quality of the building as well as the campus itself is one of the reasons Rushing says he decided to contribute to the university. When we came over that hill, and we saw this building right behind me and the Trojan Dining Hall, which wasn't here when we were here, you could have knocked us over with a feather. And while the Rushing's donation not only made an impact on Troy University, it also impacted the Rushing family. And I said, I want to be a part of this. I admire buildings, uh, great looking buildings like this. And I wanted to give something to, uh, so my kids would have an attachment to it, you know. And they had no attachment to, really to any school. And I said, well, this is a good way to start with Troy. Maybe. Events such as this one will continue as Troy University continues its vision to expand and grow the university. In fact, in just one year, the dedication for the newest fitness center will begin. Paige Weeks, Troy, Trojan Vision News. And that wasn't the only building celebrated on campus last weekend. On Saturday, many Trojan fans got their first look at the completed North End Zone facility in Veterans Memorial Stadium. However, it was Friday afternoon where university leaders marked the official opening of the addition. Janae Jordan has the details. In 2016, Troy University broke ground on the state-of-the-art North End Zone football facility. And on Friday, August 31st, Troy University cut the ribbon to unveil the new North End Zone facility. Chancellor Jack Hawkins stressed how important the facility is, not only for the university, but for recruitment. Without facilities, you can't play, nor can you recruit. And so I think, uh, you know, it's, it's about investing in the university. It's about investing in our student athletes and, uh, and giving them every benefit that they can, they can uh, possibly have so that they can be successful in the classroom and successful on the field or court. The new North End Zone is dedicated to all Trojan athletes, past, present, and future. And it celebrates the rich history of Troy University's intercollegiate athletes. Well, we've been totally committed to uh, this athletics program for as long as the athletics program has existed. Our football began in 1909, and over the years as we've elevated the level of play, uh, we've uh, been influenced to make improvements along the way. Troy's main focus is to figure out ways to bring advancements to the university, and athletics is one way to bring fans, students, and funds to the university. It's been about the ad advancement of the university, and uh, there are few ways for a university to get as much recognition uh, as it might deserve beyond athletics. The North End Zone will be unveiled to all of the students and fans on Saturday, September 1st, when the Trojans take on Boise State. Janae Jordan, Troy, Trojan Vision News. And now that football season is upon us, fans who haven't been to Troy in a while probably noticed there have been some big changes in the area surrounding Veterans Memorial Stadium since the last game was played there. Those changes will have an effect on fans attending games this season. Aaron Dixon gives us a look at what they can expect. Game day has finally returned to Troy, Alabama, as the Troy Trojans will take on the Boise State Broncos. Fans coming in town for the game are going to have to adjust to some of the new parking rules on campus. And Dean Reeves talked about some of those changes to parking. For those that don't have a designated parking space, I would encourage them to do one of a couple things. They'll either need to park on the west side of campus, which would be you know behind Patterson and, and Wallace. Uh, um, the lot behind Clements, 
and then they would have to you know, walk to the stadium. Or, as an option, they can park downtown in uh, the downtown area of Troy. They can park at one of the hotels, and they can catch a shuttle in that will drop them off right across the street from the stadium at the alumni house. Dean Reeves also mentioned the opening of McKinley Drive on Saturday, which is located behind Trojan Arena, and he discussed how long it will stay open. We'll open McKinley Drive Saturday morning about 7 o'clock. Uh, for game day traffic, it will remain open all day, and then uh, after our fans have left, we'll shut it back down uh, until the contractor you know, gets completely through. But it will be open for our game day activities, not only for this game, for next week's game. So, uh, but it will open, and, and you will be able to access uh, the Trojan Arena lot of the roundabout. Uh, from McKinley off of George Wallace. Reeves also had the opportunity to discuss the change in the tailgating area. In perspective, the only difference or the major difference this year is the uh, the RV parking. Um, you know, we do not have uh, Sartain Hall any longer, um, so therefore we've moved the RVs from where they were currently parked in Sartain down to the arena parking lot. Parking changes will also be in effect next Saturday as Troy will host Florida A&M. Aaron Dixon, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Last Friday was a day for Trojans across the state to show some school pride in the statewide College Colors Day. Seth Hawk takes a look at some of the local participation. Last week, Governor Kay Ivey signed a proclamation that made August 31st College Colors Day for the state of Alabama. And Friday, there were Troy colors all over the Troy University campus. And according to Student Government Association President Gus McKenzie, Every university in Alabama all shares the same initiative with College Colors Day. We all have a common goal of bettering our own universities, and so it's just cool to see the different ways that they do that. As far as College Colors Day, man, everybody's just so excited. Um, so it's cool to see everybody excited about their own university and what makes them special and different. For some Troy University students, College Colors Day means showing Trojan pride. I know Trojan Pride is one of the main models that we have for several organizations on campus. Um, I think one of the simple ways that we can show Trojan Pride is um, wearing its colors because it shows a lot of um, you know, enthusiasm about the different events that we have going on and it just shows that we're a collective unit together. McKenzie also says that College Colors Day doesn't just represent your collegiate athletics. You should be proud to be a Trojan, um, not just ac uh, athletically, but academically. Uh, we have great programs here at Troy to better the workforce, and to better you to be a part of that workforce. So I think that you should be proud to be a Trojan, and you should wear that cardinal with pride. The Troy Trojans will kick off Saturday evening against the Boise State Broncos at 5 p.m. in Veterans Memorial Stadium. All students are encouraged to wear their cardinal. Seth Hawk, Troy, Trojan Vision News. The Trojan football team started their season last Saturday in a matchup against the Boise State Broncos in Veterans Memorial Stadium. But before the first kick, the vet was in use as the site for the first pep rally of the year. Brady Talbert has the action. That was the word that could sum up Troy University's pep rally Thursday night, as flannels, cowboy hats, and even lassos could be seen in Veterans Memorial Stadium. On Saturday, Troy will go head-to-head -head against Boise State in the Trojans' first game of the season. And with energy levels high, the Student Government Association hoped to promote a message of simply wrangling the Broncos. It was wrangle the Broncos is for our first game against Boise State, but really the real reason we do pep rallies is just to get some involvement with the team. You know, uh, students get to see the team on the field, cheer them on, makes the team all pumped up, gets people energized and ready for the game on Saturday. The pep rally featured chants, the Troy cheerleading team, the sound of the South Marching Band, and even T. Roy himself, who had the honor of awarding the organization with the howdiest hooting and hollering with this week's Spirit Award, which was given to Kappa Delta. While the SGA has hopes of wrangling the Broncos on Saturday, they also had to wrangle the student body to get them at Thursday's event. They get to be with other students. Uh, they get to feel the atmosphere, the Trojan family, the Trojan pride is just evident. All these events that we put on, it's really fun to come together, cheer on, one common goal, one Troy, it's, it's just awesome. The SGA says the student body can expect more pep rallies, quad times, and a club showcase in the near future. Brady Talbert, Troy, Trojan Vision News. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll see how some artists from Alabama are being celebrated at Troy University. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We go and clear the roads looking for IDs, 
we're encapsulated in those vehicles and we get blast wave injuries very easily inside of those things. I'm actually diagnosed with PTSD and multiple cases of mild traumatic brain injury. But I was brought up, you know, drive on, don't let your soldiers see that anything's wrong. But I started to realize that I wasn't the same guy. Having more bad days than good days set in more and more after each deployment and each injury. When I finally realized that I needed professional help, the switch for me was my family. And my wife, Tanya, thank God, she, she's open and honest with me and hounded me enough times to where I did go and get treatment. And I'm so happy that I sought the treatment because I know that if I hadn't, there's no way I'd be a first arm right now. I know that if I hadn't said help, I would have remained helpless. I definitely think that soldiers are stronger when they realize they have a problem and they ask for help. Now back to Troy Trojan Vision News Weekly. Alabama may not be the first place you may think about when it comes to world famous artists. However, there's an exhibit at the International Art Center that is highlighting artists from Alabama. As, Alabama Kate, and as Anna Kate Patterson shows us, the Alabama artist responsible for the exhibit will be on campus to share his thoughts and feelings about his work. Troy University's International Art Center is the current home to Alabama Art Inside Out, an exhibit based on the book Alabama Art by Nall Hollis in collaboration with other Alabamian artists. Hollis will attend a reception for the exhibit on Friday, accompanied by some of the other featured artists. We will have artists Nall, Bruce Larson, and Yvonne Wells present to give the art talk, and we welcome the public. It's free. When living in France, Hollis realized the importance of showing the world all the artistic talent originating in Alabama. And he gathered 12 artists, and he did a portrait series of these artists. And with the portrait series, along with the art by the artists, uh, respective artists, they created a book which traveled uh, along with the exhibit. And Nall worked in collaboration with the other Alabamian artists to ensure that his portraits of those artists matched each individual's work. So you can see uh, their artwork in the frame and in part of the, of the portrait. Jackson encourages Troy citizens to take this opportunity to hear from the artists themselves. This event uh, is a great way for the public to have the opportunity to hear a little more from the artists and to learn a little bit uh, about the show through the eyes of the artists. The reception will be Friday at 5 p.m. in the International Art Center and is free to the public. Anna Kate Patterson, Troy, Trojan Vision News. A new student group is on its way to becoming an official on-campus organization after a vote from the Student Government Association. Aaron Dixon has the details. On Tuesday, the Student Government Association gathered for their weekly meeting, and the Vice President of Legislative Affairs was able to give us a recap of the meeting. So tonight at the SGA meeting, uh, the Senators voted to approve the uh, SPLC uh, Constitution. That will be a new club on campus for students to get involved with, so I encourage you know, students to go and check them out. Um, we also voted um, on a resolution basically stating that the SGA will be purchasing um, pom-poms for the uh, pep rallies, for games, um, basically just to, um, to encourage uh, spirit and, and, and people to cheer on our Trojans on game days. Um, so those will, that'll be purchases made from the student government in the, next, in the near future and to be used at the games. One of the biggest topics of discussion at the meeting was about Sodexo and the complaints students have had about their food. Reynolds was even able to go into more detail on the issue. Some concerns were brought to the Student Government Association um, and uh, about regarding the Trojan Dining and Sodexo. Um, and those concerns were brought to us. We also um, read some concerns on Troy students, and we are aware of those concerns. We appreciate students voicing those concerns. We are hearing them out. We want students to know that we are working on them as a uh, student government association, as a Senate. We are addressing those with um, administration and with Sodexo. We're greatly appreciative of Sodexo and what they do for us. But we just want to make sure that we communicate um, those issues and those concerns in a productive manner um, so that they can work on them and we can you know, see results. Thank and the vice president of campus activities discuss some of the events that are coming to Troy this fall. We have a club showcase on the quad coming up September 20th. It's going to be really fun and exciting. And we're also planning a couple more small events throughout the semester. The Student Government Association will meet again next week and then will be leaving next weekend for their retreat to grow closer as a governing body. Aaron Dixon, Troy, Trojan Vision News. 
Troy University's Sorrell College of Business spent Thursday morning giving students majoring in accounting a chance to explore career options by speaking directly with professionals working in the field. Stuart Bradley has the story. The Sorrell College of Business hosted the 27th Annual Accountancy Day on Thursday afternoon in Bibb Graves Hall. Accounting students were encouraged to come and meet recruiters of firms to get professional experience, practice their professional skills, discuss internships, and even possibly secure a job. Students meet the firms and you have internship possibilities and summer leadership academies and job offers just, it's, it's, a, it's a meeting point between the professional world and the college world. But the students aren't the only ones who benefit. Troy University invites several alumni back to recruit and offer positions to Troy students. The best thing about uh, Accountancy Day is that a lot of our alumni are the ones that come back and recruit on campus. So it keeps that connection with the, the university, the School of Business, and the School of Accountancy. The day also benefits the firms that come. The firms are able to talk to and possibly hire Troy students, and they stay connected with Troy University. They get employees. They get, they get people that are... Uh, trained and taught by our Troy University faculty and professors and they have they basically know what they're getting they know they're getting a person that's got a really good education and a good personality. Stuart Bradley, Troy Trojan Vision News. We're going to take another quick break but when we come back we'll see how a former New York Yankee helped inspire current Troy University students. A story is coming up right after this. So they say it's a man's world? Well, I don't see anybody's name on it. While well, they were out doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. We changed all that! Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. Now back to Troy Trojan Vision News Weekly. It isn't every day that a former professional baseball player makes a trip to the Troy campus. However, a Troy graduate who once shared the field with Mickey Mantle stopped by Troy to talk to students about his educational experience on Friday afternoon. Antonio Reese has more. On Friday afternoon, the College of Education hosted its inaugural College of Education lecture series in Hawkins Hall. To kick off the series, theme Reaching Beyond, How to Jump Over Hurdles and Land on Success, a former College of Education graduate and former professional baseball player was the guest speaker for the event. Well, I think that the, the key, what I'd hope to accomplish here, was to be able to share a, a lifetime of experience. I've, I've, had a, I've been in every state in the Union. I've been in every city of 150,000 population. I've met hundreds of thousands of people. I've rubbed shoulders with a lot of successful people, and I feel like I've, I've taken away from these people some ideas that have been truly beneficial, and that's what I detail in my new book, reaching beyond how to jump over hurdles and land on success. The event was headed by interim dean of the College of Education, Dr. Rosser Mims, who discusses just what the event was all about. What occurred today is the inaugural College of Education um, Education Lecture Series. And it's an initiative that I established this year in an effort to begin introducing different topics to help um, um, broaden the horizons of our education students within the College of Education. Guest speaker Lou Vickery discusses what it means to come back to Troy after attending so long ago. It's interesting because I, I was here for oh, 10 years as a student, and uh, that's a long time, right? <laughs> it wasn't that I was a dumb jock. I was playing professional baseball and going to school a little at a time. But the fact of the matter is I saw this university grow. It was a state teacher's college when I started. Then it became Troy State University College, and then Troy State University, now Troy University. So it's been amazing, uh, the, the growth that we've seen here. And we'll look around all the buildings. To make it, it really it truly is amazing that what has happened here at Troy. Antonio Reese, Troy, Troy Division News. 
Going to the movies is a popular pastime for college students, and twice a month, Troy students get to see a film at a discount. The University Activities Council partners with Continental Cinemas to offer students a $2 ticket to the show. Shantia Wilson has the story. Troy University's Activities Council welcomes students at Continental Cinema Wednesday night for one of their biggest events. Tonight we have $2 movie night. We have it every other Wednesday. and It's one of our best um, events for UAC. So instead of paying $6 for a regular movie ticket, we cut the price down to $2 for students. UAC hosts $2 movie night on the first and third Wednesday of each month. Students may purchase a ticket on campus at the kiosk in the Trojan Center or directly at the theater with their student ID. UAC also provides transportation for students. Shuttle pickup is outside of Smith Hall and will transport the students to the theater at no cost. UAC has the shuttle times posted on their social media and will also display the movies that are showing the evening of the event. Taylor Holt and Teresa Gartner shares why students should participate. You know students like we're all broke so it's really nice to come out and be able to see a movie just for two dollars so that's really nice and it's great to like get away from campus for a little while and you know just be a normal college student. First of all you get two dollar movies which is about probably six or seven dollars cheaper than the normal one and you honestly get to interact with people and get to meet new people and see great movies. The next UAC event will be skate night. It will take place on September 12th in the recreational center on Elm Street. Shantia Wilson, Troy, Trojan Vision News. Well, it's time for our last break. When we return, we'll learn about a way Troy University students are helping out a local elementary school. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Make sure you know where to find your family in an emergency. Start your plan at ready.gov. Now back to Troy Trojan Vision News Weekly. Next week, Troy students can do a little manual labor to help out the children of Troy Elementary School. Learn how it'll help in this week's Trojan Talk. Hello and welcome to Trojan Talk. I'm your host, Aaron Taylor. My guest today is TJ Postel. He is a graduate assistant in the Office of Civic Engagement here at Troy University. Thanks for joining me here today. Thank you. Nice to join. And uh, you're here to talk about a volunteer opportunity, a biannual event, mm -hmm. Service Week here at Troy University. And uh, uh, one in January, one in September every year, I know. And mm -hmm. the September one is done in remembrance of the 9-11 attacks. And yeah, it gives right. students an opportunity to volunteer in the community and there's often you know a, a good cause out there for them to get involved mm -hmm. with. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the service week and, and, and what this means. Okay so uh, like you said basically this is an annual thing that we do. Uh, the one in particular that we're doing right now we're moving the garden beds from over there at the elementary school basically to a one centralized location to make it more easily accessible for the students and the teachers there as well. So uh, this is just a, a annual thing we do. We this one project we come together and try to serve our community and if you're interested in uh, volunteering then you should really come out and uh, try it. Well, and, and so and you talk about that volunteering and that's kind of the goal of the Office of Civic Engagement is mm -hmm. to get students involved in the community. Yes, so why is it so important for students to to take advantage of volunteer opportunities like this? Uh, Basically, a lot of students that come to Troy, they're from out of town, so they're not really that familiar with the community as a whole. So basically, you know, get you out of your dorm room and, you know, really get you involved and meet new people as well. And if you're interested in volunteering, you're knocking two birds out with one stone. <laughs> so if you're interested in volunteering, meeting new people, this is really the place right here, especially serving the community here in Troy. And I know it, it, the benefit there could possibly go after you graduate because if you start on a path of volunteerism right. and civic engagement it's something that 
could potentially follow you and something you'll continue to do after you leave school. This is very true. Uh, me personally, I just started here. Uh, we, we don't, I'm sorry to backtrack a little bit, but yeah. we went on this trip actually this past summer to DC and uh, as we were coming out the tunnel, there was all these people like sleeping on the, the concrete and the mm -hmm. pavement and stuff like that. And it really just opened my eyes to the poverty that we have here in our own country. So I, I really think volunteering is a great way, you know, to help out, you know, those people. It, we might not see it as much here in Troy, but there are people that are food insecure that may not know where their next meal are coming from or anything like that. So, And, and for this event uh, coming up, it's kind of an expansion of what was done in the past because I know yeah. the MLK Service Week uh, was building this outdoor classroom yeah. and so now uh, it's kind of a, a I guess expanding and changing what is done out there by moving these garden beds to this area and it gives it gives the students a, I guess a better opportunity to uh, utilize that outdoor classroom area. Yes, sir. So yeah, we're building, you know, we're taking all those garden beds, mm -hmm. put them all in one centralized location located over there by the uh, outdoor classroom mm -hmm. and the nature trail. Um, how we're trying to get the kids involved in that, actually uh, our activities coordinator, Lauren Cochran, along with a few volunteers, went over there to the school this morning actually and they uh, learned about perimeter and area and we're uh, uh, enlisting the help of the fifth grade class basically to help with the design layout. Oh, that that's actually. cool. So so the, the kids are actually going to be a part of this yes. operation. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to bring the college kids in for the heavy lifting, right? Yes, so, basically. Uh, talk, talk about what the, <laughs> someone who wants to volunteer can expect to get out of this event. So. Uh, if, if you're uh, very interested in, uh, you know, this is something that's close to home to mm -hmm. you as well, uh, volunteering, this is the this is the marquee thing right here that you need to do right here okay uh, what are they going to be doing if they if they come and volunteer so what, what can they expect to be doing so uh, okay so basically uh, first day monday and tuesday that's going to be our muscle guys we're going to really need okay. help those two days we're going to be shoveling a lot of dirt moving those garden beds off to one centralized location as we get off to wednesday and thursday we're going to be building a fence around you know to keep you know animals out and stuff like that to keep the garden safe all right, and then the students uh, want to get involved. I know they could probably just show up, but then there's also an opportunity for them to, to sign up and register to get involved. Will, tell us about that. So. Yeah, you can, you can show up. We're not going to uh, turn you away, <laughs> but uh, for you to sign up, basically you go to our link. It's called uh, Volunteer Hub, Camp Campus Kitchens of Volunteer Hub. Also, that link is on Facebook, our Instagram, and our Twitter as well at Campus uh, at Civic, the Office of Civic Engagement. All right, and don't get thrown off that it yeah. says Campus Kitchens uh -huh. because uh, even though that's a volunteer for something through Civic Engagement Campus Kitchens, this is an opportunity for folks to sign up for the 9-11 Service Week. So, yeah. uh, and, and on a weekly schedule, about when do y'all think y'all throughout the week y'all are going to be over the elementary school working? So if somebody did uh -huh. want to come over and help out. so We're looking at a time frame between 1.30 and uh, 4.30, uh, Monday through Thursday, September 10th through September 13th. All right, well, it uh, sounds like a good yeah. opportunity for some students to get involved uh -huh. and help out the the kids at Troy Elementary School. I want, TJ, I want to thank you for joining me here today and letting us know about uh, what's going on 9-11 Service Week. Thanks for joining me today. So. Thank you. And Brilliant. thank you for joining uh, us on today's edition <laughs> of Trojan Talk. And that's what happened this week. To find out what's happening throughout the week, you can tune into Troy Trojan Vision News at 5, 6.30, and 10.30, Monday through Friday, or anytime by following us on Twitter at Troy TV News. Also, feel free to like our Troy Trojan Vision News fan page on Facebook to see online content from Troy Trojan Vision News. We hope you join us again next week for another edition of Troy Trojan Vision Weekly. Have a good week.